this is the real stuff that I want everyone to see. First time I came in, man, I was so intimidated because I, I just sat down and we were there playing Nago and like it's just a simple clack, clack, clack. And I'm sitting down and I'm playing it because like right when you walk in, Frisner, he makes you just sit down and play right away. I think he's a generous individual at heart and is generous with his time, his knowledge, and he's shown that because I know that he works in the community. I know that he gives a lot of himself. <laughs> He doesn't teach pedagogically, he teaches just like to learn feelings and, and there's a whole, there's a whole, I guess you have to have it sort of internally, you have to be able to have, feel the rhythms, you have to be able to I know, express yourself through the way, I don't know, through not, I guess his like personal feeling, like I, I can't even express it, the way that when you sit there and you're playing and the way that Frisner will look into your eyes and and you just kind of have to let go and you feel the music coming from him going through you. Right. Because obviously I never would have been playing this music or anything if I never had met Frisner. <laughs> yeah. I mean, voodoo culture is like, it's, it's kind of like a taboo and it's sort of demonized in a lot of the a mainstream sort of American because they made a bunch of silly movies about it. I think the bias that some people have towards voodoo partly stem from lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Or actually in the United States, a large part it stems from a lack of knowledge, um, misinformation about what voodoo means. You know. You know, because of what we do, voodoo, I mean, you would think that because it's Haitian, there would be a lot of support for it, but people actually have a lot of mixed feelings about voodoo. Uh, and it's because of, you know, it's called voodoo here, and there have been these awful Hollywood films that have come out about voodoo and zombies and black magic and uh, cannibalism and the whole thing that, you know, I mean, I, I know something about the history of that too, it goes way back. Um, but it really, um, you know, if you say voodoo, or, or, well, if you say voodoo, if you pronounce it that way to the average American, they're probably not going to know what you're talking about. And then if you say, oh, well, the thing that people call voodoo, well, right away they think of little dolls that you stick pins in, you know, to hurt your enemy and, and you know, all that nonsense. Yeah, I mean, everybody I know pretty much knows what I'm doing here on Friday nights. <laughs> But basically, the club is um, to let people know about Haitian culture. Could, um, we would talk about drumming and stuff. I, I took some drumming before when I was old, back in Haiti. You know, if you go to Haiti, you know, people practice voodoo, and it's just the, the thing is, people have a different idea of what it is. They think of voodoo as um, satanic, or but it's not really. It's not. It's not. It's it's a good thing. Me, 
maybe in the spring of 83, and then in the fall of 83, we started it. We do performances now. His students get up to perform, you know, he really wants them to be good because it's a reflection on him. because this is a rhythm that Frisner created himself and taught me. This is called Voodoo Jazz, and it's an original rhythm that Frisner created out of his different influences. And what I always loved about playing with Frisner is that he didn't limit his, himself at all to one type of music. He plays 
mostly Bodu, but he can play folklore wonderfully, salsa, rock and roll, anything. And this kind of combines all his different influences. Voodoo jazz. been studying with Prisoner for, let me see, since 1983 or 84, and, um, and he's really reached a pretty high level. Um, still, it's just not going to be the same, <laughs> you know. Uh, he'll never have the same level of knowledge that Prisoner does. <laughs> 